Hello friends, uh, welcome back. In this session, we'll quickly understand what is MISRA, Mistra C, C++. When I was going through and browsing through about the C++ and the C guidelines, one of the very prominent guidelines which was available was Mistra C and C++. I thought I should make a session on it quickly so that whomever is the beginner, whomever wants to code for embedded systems can adhere to these guidelines and they can do better coding. This is very interesting and very important too and I am going to brief you on that. Let's get into the session straight away. The agenda is very simple. To make you understand what Mishra C, C++ is all about, to understand the guidelines and the standards and most importantly to give you the reference link. I am going to give you some reference link which you can refer and some of the publicly available Mishra guidelines I am going to talk about as well quickly. What is MISREA C, C++? It is nothing but a formal set of guidelines which are very well framed for automotive software development. It is very specific for automotive software development. When you are developing software for an automotive system with C and C++, we go ahead with this guidelines and that is called MISRA C, C++ guidelines. What is MISRA? It is very simple again. The Motor Industry Software Reliability Association. The Motor Industry Software Reliability Association. This is from UK and they are the people who framed it. They are the one who totally look after all these standards and development of these standards and maintenance of this as well. MISRA guidelines are 100% very specific for automobiles but any embedded system I think can follow this because these guidelines are appreciated by many industries and they follow it. So if you are developing an embedded system which is real time I think you can adhere to these guidelines and you can start following it. Well, why there has to be a programming standard for automobiles? First and foremost point that will come into your mind is the safety. Yes, the safety for the automobile is a paramount thing because if the automobile fails, if the software that you are writing for the automobile fails, it will be catastrophic and also fatal. It could kill a lot of people, it may cause accidents, it may cause damages which can never be reverted. So, it is very important that the software that is being written for the automobiles is of high standard high quality and most importantly they should not fail. They should be fail proof. Nowadays if you see most of the automobiles are software dominant which means most of the functionalities are governed through hardware but that hardware is completely governed by software. Particularly the embedded programming has taken over the automobile industry. So MISRA gives you guidelines for those kind of programming which goes into the automobiles and the developers are expected to go ahead and adhere with these rules and regulations without breaking it. The first version of this MISRA guidelines came in 1998, second in 2004 and many such revisions have come and each revision has added more and more contents to it, more and more rules to it. So in one word safety is paramount, overall safety, overall safe design is the core aim of this MISRA standard. C and C++ are most preferred for any automobile programming because of its most, I mean, it's, it's proven. The embedded C language, embedded C++ is always proven and it is already found successful. So the application usage, the application development in the automobile sector is done mostly with C and C++ as I told you. But they have some limitations too. The developer who has got a very strong knowledge and depth knowledge of C and C++ would not use those points which are weak in C and C++ and they would avoid that limitation use. But the people who are not familiar with those in-depth content or those features which could cause damage when you implement it on, when you implement it on the roads in the car or the automobiles, that, that is where MISRA guidelines come into picture. They give you a guideline and you need to follow that guideline when you are building an automobile software and that guidelines will take care of the quality of the code that you are writing. Sir, where will I learn all this, sir? Very simple. There is a website for it, www.misra.org.uk. Just go there, you get all the details and if you want to use the standards, if you want to download the standards, you will have to pay for it. And there is a guideline, there are payment structures that are available. Just go through it, your uh, credit debit cards will be accepted and you can download it and you can pay for it and you can start downloading the content. They have got multiple versions available and you can go through it as well. Now there are three categories that you need to understand which is proposed by MISRA guidelines. One is mandatory, the second one is required, and the third one is advisory. What is mandatory? 
mandatory guidelines are must they cannot be ignored when you are a developer if you are building a system if you are building a software for automobiles you must follow these guidelines which are mentioned as mandatory required it is must but in case in a situation you cannot use it you are exempted but you need to try to handle it in such a way that you are not missing that required guidelines as well the worst case you are permitted to leave it advisory this is like a guideline which you are supposed to follow but not mandatory in case you like you can follow it it is good for you is the kind of case that they advise put advice in the advisory category so there are three categories mandatory required and advisory you can go through all these in the guidelines that they have given quickly i could find out some of the simplest guidelines that they have conveyed so that you can get an idea of how these misra guidelines are framed first whenever you use if else if else while do while or for that must be enclosed uh, i mean the statements must be always enclosed in braces but we don't uh, do it when we do it normal programming if there is only one line of the code which is going to follow any one of this looping constructs we say that there is no requirement for using a curtain brace but in mr standard they say that it is mandatory all the if else constructs shall be terminated with an else clause for sure we say that else is not mandatory also at times right we have, we have coded that way but all the if else constructs must go with else class mandatorily being used this is one of the constructs that they say mr standard says that std libh should not be used they recommend you not to use std lib and my views are very simple these guidelines can be followed you can understand and you can visualize that what are all the things that you should not do when you go with programming real time systems by referring mr guidelines you may or may not follow it but at least refer to it so that you can understand what are all the negatives that you should not do when you are coding that's it i hope you understood something some useful content out of it if you have any questions please go ahead and type it in the comment section i'll be able to answer it thank you